These rocky shores Where I call home Where my heart longs to be Whenever I roam It's these rocky shores It's where I long to be Yes, it's these rocky shores they are home to me Whenever I leave here It hurts me so With tears in my eyes Oh, I ain't go There ain't no work And the kids need new clothes The bills need pay So I'll buy my stone These rocky shores where I call home Where my heart longs to be Whenever I roam Yes, these rocky shores It's where I long to be Yes, these rocky shores They're home to me Where did it all go? The life I once had on the ocean to roll. My tears in my eyes and my head in my head. Away from my family, I hope they understand. That is these rocky shores where I call home. That's where my heart longs to be. Whenever I roam It's these rocky shores Where I long to be It's these rocky shores They're home to me Yes, these rocky shores They're home Good evening, welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight's stories include Burgio Fire Department made a donation to Jess's Journey, Town of Burgio has declared cleanup weeks, Adventure Tourism Panel discussion was held on Thursday, we'll have a court report, these stories plus community events, BBS Playbill, Off the Rack, and more coming up after this. This is the place where the dawn breaks earliest. The new year comes soonest. And the Atlantic first meets the new world. You can walk the streets of the oldest city in North America. East of the Western world. Members of the Burgio Volunteer Fire Department traveled to the Trans-Canada Highway last Sunday to make a presentation 
to Jesse's journey. Members of the Burgio Volunteer Fire Department would like to thank everyone who made donations towards Jesse's Journey, a father's tribute. After they made the presentation, members of the Burgio Volunteer Fire Department walked with Jesse's father for a while before heading back to Burgio. Town workers have begun site preparations for the monument donated by Hubert Strickland as a tribute to fishermen and seamen of Burgio. The monument is being placed at the site of Burgio's first library near Faith United Church. The cement base for the monument should be poured this coming week. The area was sodded and trees were planted last year to make it a more attractive area. The addition of the monument from Mr. Strickland will make this a landmark that Burgio residents can be proud of. A workshop on adventure tourism was held here in Burgio on Thursday. Thursday evening, the resource people present for the workshop were involved in a panel discussion on this channel. The panel, which was moderated by Sam Organ, our local development officer, was broken into three segments. His guests included Dan Chason from the Department of Tourism. Uh, generally, in a broad terms, it's uh, non-consumptive adventure tourism or adventure travel. It can be referred to as a leisure activity that takes place in a remote setting and generally a, an unspoiled part of the world. It involves various degrees of activity, obviously. Uh, mountain climbing would be one high-end example, while sea kayaking, for example, would probably be, uh, or boat touring would be an example of, a, uh, of an activity that would be on the lower end of the scale with respect to, uh, to the act to degree of activity. During the second segment, the panel was joined by Richard Alexander of the Festival Coast Tourism Association and Tom Hutchings, Development Officer with the Long Range Red Board. The sea coast and oceans being the product um, here in Burgio and in all over the province really. Um, you only have to look at what's happening uh, for outfitting in, for that product here in, in, in Burgio right now. Um, to my knowledge there are probably two, two or three Newfoundland adventure tourism operators that are advertising sea kayaking vacations down in the Burgio area. And uh, this summer actually there's a uh, operator from Nova Scotia that's planning on running a trip from Burgio to I believe it's La Poyle. So with no marketing or no very little promotion being done, um, there are people coming to, to paddle in this area, to sea kayak in this area, and experience the, the ocean and the sea coast. So I, I think there's no doubt that there is a product. Um, the question is, and the, the big question is, can we capitalize on that product and, and work towards increasing the number of visitors to this region? I guess from our perspective, just looking at the zone as a whole, and, and, and we've talked to this uh, numerous times, uh, in discussions we've had elsewhere, the product that our zone in, in total, or I guess as a package, has to offer is coastal experience, sea coast, to marine environment. So what we're what we were suggesting today here in Burjo, in terms of, of looking at of that product, the, the marine environment, is consistent with what we're how we're trying to package the whole zone as a as a destination within the province, or uh, trying to package it with other destinations to get more visitors to the area. The third segment of the panel discussion saw a change in panelists. The new panel consisted of Barry Welton from Human Resources and Development, Mary Lambert from the Long Range BDC, and Mark Felix from the Department of Development and Rural Renewal. In uh, looking at the adventure tourism that we talked about today, uh, I just gave a brief overview of how uh, we could uh, get involved, possibility, Keeping in mind is that our department, uh, similar to others, uh, we're looking at job creation. We consider that to be a major uh, factor in when we look at approving uh, proposals. Uh, as you're aware, we do have a, uh, a presence in the community of uh, 
uh, Bergio. Uh, we have a presence. We have a, a, an outreach office here. And as well, uh, a part-time reference uh, or outreach office in Ramey as well. So we're represented in the community and through that uh, we can be contacted in the Steve Mill office uh, as well where I work from. So uh, if anybody needs any information concerning uh, types of programs, certainly through uh, Jerry Billard, our uh, outreach officer here, or uh, you can contact the, uh, the Steve Mill office as well. We can discuss any of these programs. The we offer a couple of programs through our office. Uh, we have loans program. We go up to $125,000 in term loans. In addition to that, we, we offer technical support. And we have a youth uh, business development program uh, offering loans up to $15,000. I gave an overview of those programs today at the, uh, at the session. And if anyone uh, who wasn't there that did require other information, you can certainly contact me at my office in Stephenville. Uh, Sam has the number, and uh, we uh, could certainly get back to you. Uh, our department is certainly interested in doing what we can. We provide loan support as well as other uh, support in planning and business plan development. Uh, the only caution is that uh, when people are looking at getting into business, uh, we've got to remember that uh, you can't get everything for nothing, is that we, we as agencies are expecting individuals to put in their share of equity. Uh, we also uh, have to understand that uh, you need a good plan. Uh, in adventure tourism in particular, and in any business plan, marketing tends to be the area that needs the most work. Uh, and marketing is, is, is not as easy as it seems. You need a strategy to get your target market. You've got to know uh, who you're going to go after, especially in adventure tourism. So uh, there's support out there to uh, assist people in getting marketing plans together, uh, and uh, that's available to a number of agencies. Uh, the other thing, I guess, is that the, uh, this area has uh, an economic development officer, True Sam and the Red Board, and our department works very closely with Tom Hutchings, who's no stranger to uh, the Southwest Coast for sure. And uh, what we try to do is help the, uh, the Zone Board implement their strategic economic plan. So if there's people out there with ideas in job creation and how they could create jobs in this coast and diversify the community, uh, I'm sure the agencies, and uh, we, we're certainly more than willing to meet with, uh, with these individuals. We could come down on a regular basis if need be, uh, once every two weeks or once a month to meet with clients or individuals that are pursuing initiatives. For those of you who may have missed this panel, the panel will be shown again in its entirety in the next few weeks. Watch for it on the BBS Playbill. Stay with us. There's more of This Week in Review coming up after this. This is the place where the dawn breaks earliest, the new year comes soonest, where the Atlantic first meets the new world, the oldest city in North America, the far east of the Western world. Imagine that. Come for a good time and we'll sweep you off your feet with jigs and reels and festivals and the world's most friendly folk. Dance your cares away at the Kellegrew Soiree. Imagine that. The town of Burgio has declared two weeks, one in May and one in July, as cleanup periods within our town. The town of Burgio has designated the weeks of May 25th to May 30th and July 19th through 25th as cleanup periods within the municipal boundaries. Council trucks will be provided to pick up garbage placed along the sides of the streets. All scrap vehicles will be removed as well with no charge to the owner during these periods. The town dump will be open daily except Sundays for people to drop off garbage during the cleanup periods. With our community celebrating its second come home year this summer, let's all pull together to make our community a place we can be proud of. Constable McDougall is with us now with the court report. Provincial court was held again in Burgio on April 29th, 1998. A total of 19 persons appeared to face a range of charges. The dispositions were as follows. The 17-year-old male from Burgio pled not guilty to a, one count of a unlawfully possessing alcohol and a breach of probation. That matter was set over to June 17th for trial. A 16-year-old male from Burgio pled guilty to a count of breaching his probation order and he was sentenced to 30 hours of community service. A 17-year-old male from Burgio pled guilty to 
a count of breaching his probation order, one count of illegal possession of alcohol, one count of assault causing bodily harm, one count of failing to comply with the condition of an undertaking, a further count of breach of probation, one count of theft under $5,000, and a further count of failing to comply with the condition of an undertaking. One count of failing to comply with the condition of an undertaking was withdrawn by the Crown. All these charges were set over to June 17th for facts and sentencing. A 14-year-old male from Burgio pled guilty to one count of possession of a controlled drug or substance and one count of breaching his probation order. That matter was set over to June 17th for facts and sentencing. A 17-year-old male from Burgio failed to appear in relation to a number of charges, two counts of damage to property under $5,000 four counts of breaching his probation order, one count of assaulting a peace officer, and one count of illegal possession of alcohol. A warrant was issued for his arrest. A 19-year-old male from Burgio pled not guilty to one count of causing a disturbance. That is set over to June 17th for trial. A 72-year-old male from Burgio pled not guilty to one count of sexual assault actually two counts of sexual assault and one count of assault. Those matters were set over to June 17th for preliminary hearing and further set over to August the 5th for a trial date. 44-year-old male from Ramia pled not guilty to two counts of assault. That matter has been set over to June 17th for trial. 48-year-old male from Isla Mort had another person uh, appear on his behalf and entered a not guilty plea to a, uh, a violation of the Liquor Control Act allowing consumption of liquor on licensed premises after hours. That matter was over to July the 29th for a trial. One count of assault against a 17 year old female from Ramia was uh, stayed by the Crown Prosecutor and has been forwarded to the Alternative Measures Program in uh, St. Albans. A 17 year old male from Burgio pled guilty to a number of charges, uh, which include uh, four counts of breach of probation, one count of possession of narcotics, one count of unlawfully possessing alcohol, and one count of theft under $5,000. All these matters have been set over to June 17th for facts and sentencing. A 60 year old female from Ramia failed to appear on a, on a charge of uh, under the Dog Act, failing to keep her dog tethered or penned. That matter has been set over to June 17th uh, for a trial. A 16-year-old male from Burgio pled guilty to one count of damage to property, one count of assaulting a peace officer, and a further count of uh, damage to property under $5,000. Those matters were set over to June 17th for facts and sentencing. A 52-year-old male from Ramia pled guilty to uh, violating his probation order and he was sentenced to 21 days in jail. Two gentlemen from Musgrave Town appeared and uh, had a trial in relation to uh, four violations of the Wildlife Act. They were found not guilty in relation to two uh, counts of failing to comply with the big game license requirement. They were found guilty in relation to two other counts of breach of the act of the regulations. One gentleman was fined $150 in relation to his violation and the other gentleman was fined uh, $350 in uh, relation to his violation. A 19 year old male from Burjo pled not guilty to one count of assaulting a peace officer and one count of breaching his probation order. That matter was set over to June 17th for trial. A 17 year old male from Burjo appeared and pled guilty to two counts, one count of uh, violating his probation order, the other count to violating conditions of his undertaking. That matter was set over to June 17th for facts and sentencing. Provincial court will be held again in Burgio on June the 17th starting at 10.30 a.m. Now over to Mayor Ham with a report from the last town council meeting. Uh, good evening. I'm giving the report for the uh, Town, uh, town Council meeting on May the 6th, 1998. 
first subject uh, discussed at our meeting was the capital funding. Some time ago, we reported that we made an application for capital funding for our sidewalks and, and our streets that's not paved and those that, that where the pavement has gone into a state of disrepair. The total of our application was $471,000. We have been advised that it is quite possible that our application will be approved. So if it is, that means that uh, Municipal Affairs will fund one quarter of that amount. And the town will be responsible for 353000 So at our meeting, it was decided that rather than drag this thing out year after year, that we we, we would uh, look into trying and uh, try and get the old sh uh, job done just in one shot. So authority was granted to the town manager to deal with the banks and see if he could raise a loan for three hundred and fifty three thousand uh, dollars. If it is successful, then this year we should see uh, quite a bit of capital works uh, jobs uh, go ahead. Another subject was the TJF funding on the Argentine for the fish plant. And uh, the application for that funding was uh, submitted on April the 28th. Uh, a lengthy discussion was held on the plant. Uh, dealings with the fish plant has been very frustrating. However, we're still hanging in there and hoping that something will come forth. The recreation school complex, uh, the engineers have been in here once and uh, looked at a few sites. So uh, they hope to have that uh, feasibility study completed by the end of May or the middle of June. And while I'm on that subject, uh, the telethon for the arena was held during the uh, past Sunday. But prior to that, uh, I had received uh, a few comments and, uh, and inquiries as to the cost of, uh, of bringing in Mr. Dick Reeves to host uh, this telethon. So therefore, I brought it up at our uh, council meeting and uh, figures was tossed around town of from 3000 to $5,000. Uh, we didn't have a figures, but since that, I've contacted one member of the committee, and he assures me that it's nowhere near three to five thousand dollars. And he picked up the ticket himself, and it was a return ticket for Mr. Reeves, and it was six hundred and fifty-seven dollars. So you know, I just thought it was time to dispel those rumors because uh, that would have a negative effect on what we're trying to do. Uh, now that was just the return airfare ticket. No doubt there was uh, uh, probably a motel bill and some other expenses. But regardless of where the person came from, you would still have those expenses. So I just pass it out to the public that uh, sometimes we should check things out before we start uh, saying the first thing that comes to mind. The uh, the memorial to the seamen, that's up and ready to be poured, probably be poured next week. Uh, we've had some reports of uh, bicycle riders and people uh, walking around the area there, which will probably destroy the grass. So if at all possible, we would encourage people not to uh, walk over the area any more than they've got to. Uh, three building permits were approved uh, during the meeting. And it was with regret that we accepted the resignation of our deputy mayor, Mr. Gordon Tucker. Uh, Mr. Tucker is resigning, uh, I feel, from my conversation with him more on a, on a personal matter. He didn't wish to discuss it in public. However, he assured me that it was nothing to do with the town council. It was nothing to do with the councillors or with myself. So I've, I respect his request uh, not to discuss it in public, and it was with regret that we saw Mr. Tucker uh, re resign from the town council. 
The subject of rollerblading around town was, uh, was brought up at the meeting. Uh, council has a bylaw that prohibits rollerblades. However, uh, some of the councillors, and including myself, uh, wonders if uh, the, that bylaw should be there. And we're thinking seriously of rescinding the bylaw. It will probably come up at our next council meeting. So therefore, if the public has got, uh, want to have any input into this rollerblade issue, then they should uh, try to pass along their concerns to the town office before the next meeting. There's no point in having a bylaw if you can't enforce it. And rollerblading is going on in Toronto, St. John's, and all the other places that I know of, and uh, I don't think that Burjo, you know, is, uh, there's not that much for kids around here to do. But in any event, if you've got a, an opinion to express on rollerblade, well, get it into the town office. Another thing which happened uh, since our last council meeting, and, and the council was updated at this meeting, the town has made an application uh, to have Burjo considered uh, uh, as a, a possible site for a garment factory. It was last uh, Friday, May the 1st. Uh, Mr. George Reed contacted me. He had been contacted by Mr. Dick Whitaker, advising that he'd heard uh, Premier Tobin on uh, CBC radio. And there was some talk of uh, Mr. Arthur Lee wishing to start a garment factory in Newfoundland and uh, and it would, would, him, would him employ a considerable number of people, possibly even up to 1,000 people. I immediately got on to Sam Organ, our development officer and our town manager, Mr. Doug Candle. They tracked down the information from CBC and on Monday, May the 4th, we submitted a proposal and a request to uh, Judy Foote's office that if this garment factory is to be set up in Newfoundland, that Berger would like to have a chance uh, to, uh, to make a bid for the garment factory. So we've told them what we got to offer. We've invited them to come in and look at Berger. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. I it seems as if uh, practically no one in government knew anything about it. But anyway, whether we're successful or not, at least Burjo have got a proposal in uh, which uh, outlines what, uh, what is available in Burjo as far as transportation, our seaport, our wharfs, uh, what buildings is available, and, and we're really trying to get them to come in and at least look and give us a chance uh, f uh, to get those jobs. The cleanup week for 1998, uh, the town has decided again this year they would do it in, uh, in two stages. One cleanup week will be from May the 24th to May the 30th. And then prior to the Comom year, we would have another week from July the 19th to July the 25th. So we'd like to encourage people to, uh, to get out and uh, clean up their property and uh, try spiff up our town. And again, uh, while I'm on that subject, uh, the subject of uh, garbage around Mainty Hill was brought up. It appears as if there's beer bottles being broken up there, and, and that's not a good thing. That's not what the walkway was put up there for. The town will be putting garbage receptacles up on the hill, and the town manager will be contacting the RCMP to see if we can't get a scatter patrol up there sometime to just try stop this type of going on, uh, such as the drinking and, uh, and the beating up of the beer bottles. The town also received a letter from the Chamber of Commerce asking uh, what they could do in regard to trying to get the fish plant reactivated. The town really couldn't give a clear answer on this, although we, did, uh, we will be suggesting to the chamber that they, uh, they would try establish contact with, with Mr. Barry and see if they can't uh, get him in here to update the people on just what is uh, 
just exactly what is dates, uh, what his plans is for Virgil, and on what dates he expects things to happen, and so on. Town have also been getting quite a com few complaints about the blubber which has been floating around in the short reach as a, re as a result of this, uh, this seal auto production which is going on over there. And it's quite understandable, people with boats and rope and so on, they shouldn't have to wear rubber gloves just to, to unmoor their boats and so on. At the present time, as we know, they're installing a separator which should take care of the problem. If it doesn't, then the town will probably have to uh, go to the environment uh, for some very, very difficult decision, probably as far as closing the thing down, because nobody wants to shut something down that's going to take a few jobs out. But I don't think that we can have jobs at any cost. And uh, so therefore, uh, that's where we stand on that at the present time. We'll see how the separator works out, and hopefully it work, works out good. Uh, another matter which was, came up is we, we do get a few complaints about what you could call unsightly property around town. And while the town council agrees fully that, you know, uh, some property may, may not be tidy and it could be unsightly as far as a house or so on, but you can't just remove a piece of property. The town just doesn't have the authority to uh, compel someone to paint their house and so on. If a piece of property is a hazard, then the town can do something. You know, if people are living in uh, conditions that's, that's not fit for them to live in, well then between the social services and the town and and so on, well then something can be done. But just because a piece of property is unsightly, uh, it doesn't mean that the town can move in. You know, you, you can't compel someone to paint their house or put in a lawn or grow flowers or things like that. The town would like to see that. But uh, in any event, we've really uh, asked the town manager to contact uh, municipal affairs and get a clarification, just, just what is the uh, position of uh, the town councils regarding unsightly property and so on. Uh, Burjo will be uh, applying to be get under the Tidy Towns uh, uh, project this year. The guidelines for Tidy Towns will not be out until May the 15th. Councillor Jim Pink uh, will be coordinating this. And we're going to try to see if... Uh, if we can't uh, get Burjo on that uh, on that tidy town list, and maybe win the tidy tidy town award, and that was just about it uh, for our council meeting. There's one other subject I'd like, or er, perhaps one or two the subject I'd like to speak on is uh, in our town. I mentioned some time ago about the excessive amount of water which is used in our town. In the early morning hours now, probably four or five o'clock in the morning when you would expect that the minimum amount of water would be used, we're still going through 380 gallons per minute. It's, it's down from the uh, normal winter uh, run, but still 380 gallons a minute, you know, which works out to 22,800 gallons an hour when you would hardly think anybody would be drawing water is a lot of water. Now, it's not that there's not plenty of water, and it's not that the town is trying to cut back on anybody. Use whatever water you need. But uh, I'm sure that there's taps that are still running. There's that ball on the flush tank that was took out and put away. have never been screwed back probably for years. And there really is no need for this. And like I've said before, your chlorine system is a demand system. The number of gallons of water also uh, dictates the amount of chlorine which is used. So therefore, there's no need of running the taps. There's no need of uh, having the ball unscrewed on the flush box anymore. So put it back on and everybody do their part and see if we can't get that uh, 380 gallon per minute uh, cut down. The uh, town clerk advises me that he's put, out no put notices in the mail regarding tax collection and so on. You're all aware now of our new tax policy, which will be followed. And uh, 
the tax policy works good for property tax. It just doesn't work that good for uh, people on the poll tax. However, the clerk assures me that uh, he's got everything brought up to date. He sent out letters, and the next step he'll be sending it off to the courts. So if you've got it there, then get in and speak to Stan. Try to get some arrange arrangement made because uh, everybody's got to pay taxes. And that's about it for this week. Stay tuned for Off the Rack, community events, and the BBS Playbill. All that after this. There's gannets and puffins, kittiwakes and myrrhs, guillemots, petrels and owls. And you can see where the eagle has landed. Imagine that. It's a land with over 10,000 miles of coastline, thousands of inlets, coves, guts and bays, a land that lives by the sea. No wonder our dogs have webbed feet. Imagine that. Off the Rack. This week as we scanned our tape racks, we came across a video of preparations for the opening of Sandbanks Provincial Park for the camping season seven years ago. Here's a look back now to May of 1991. Good evening and welcome to the community events segment of tonight's broadcast. I'm Linda Green. The Hello PA will be holding a TV bingo on Wednesday, May the 13th. Cards are a dollar each or six for five dollars and are available from any Hello PA member or in most stores around town. If your group or organization has an upcoming event plan, we would be happy to advertise it for you. You can contact the BBS office by Wednesday of each week to have items included in this portion of our broadcast. That concludes the community event segment of tonight's program. See you next week. BBS Playbill. Join us on Monday at 7 p.m. for Jesse's Journey, a marathon of love. Tune in on Tuesday at 7 p.m. for Pansy's Garden. Try your luck on Wednesday at 7 p.m. by playing LOBA TV Bingo. Following Bingo, we'll have a video entitled Time to Change. This video is a follow-up to the video, One Hit Leads to Another, which we aired a few weeks back. At 7 p.m. on Thursday, we'll have Telethon Entertainment, Part 1. Join Pansy and the gang for crafts, stories, and lots of fun Saturday morning, 11 a.m. on Pansy's Garden. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. Next week's program will be followed by Telethon Entertainment, Part 2. Please stay tuned now for Telethon Entertainment, Part 1. For this week in review, I'm Dave Cooper. Good night.